here to share a story with you about how our family traveled to South Africa for a year and a half back in 2006. It all began when our church got involved in an orphanage called Lily of the Valley. We, besides just sending funds over, we actually got to travel with 30 other members and got to go over there and help at the orphanage. While we were there, we saw that the AIDS rate was very serious. We got to see that whole generation of parents had been wiped out due to the AIDS, leaving all these kids homeless. So Lily of the Valley took 125 of them and is now taking care of them. While we were on a mission trip for two weeks there with our church, my dad got a call from God saying, we need to move our family here. So six months later, we packed up our bags, just two suitcases each, and traveled all the way to South Africa. When we got there, we moved from our amazing house here in Thousand Oaks, because we're so lucky to live in such an amazing area, and moved to this ruined farmhouse. <laughs> Not as great, huh? <laughs> but after six weeks in building with the local help, we turned it into this. A little nicer, huh? <laughs> While we were there, we got to help at the orphanage a lot and got to become friends with a lot of the orphans. We got to do art projects with them, help them learn how to sew, even helped with homework, and taught them how to grow gardens. While we were there, we also got to meet the three girls we had sponsored. Besides just sending monthly checks of money, we actually got to meet them and become friends with them and saw that they're not much different from ourselves. They were even the same ages as us, so we got to connect with them even more. And their names were Nicole, Tande, and Sebashle. While we were there, we saw that the village of Mopela that the orphanage was located in was a desperate place in desperate need. It had a 90% unemployment rate, an 80% AIDS rate, and was home to 20,000 people. We saw that they struggled with many things just on having to survive. And although we do struggle with things here, don't get me wrong, I know we do, but they would have to deal with things like seeing their neighbor build a coffin so that your baby can have a funeral the next day, or having to walk miles and miles every morning just so you can get two buckets of water for your family that day, or having to worry about the next meal and where it's coming from, which will probably consist of cornmeal, which is a white mush that does not taste very good. Let me tell you, I've tried it. <laughs> but, um, we got to bring KFC to them once, and they freaked out just to have KFC, which is something we take for granted. We also got to visit the local school there, which as you can see is not quite like Westlake or Tio or Newberry. <laughs> but besides their lack of funding and being super overcrowded, they got to wear uniforms, which is something we don't really care about and sort of put down, because uniforms aren't that great here. But there, it's the one thing they have. These kids get to wear a uniform, they take pride in that, and it's something that is their own. We soon realized that the people there loved music and to dance and sing. They have a famous saying there, if you could talk, you could sing, and if you could walk, you could dance. And it was pretty much true for everyone there. With my dad being a professional musician, we knew music was the easiest way to reach the people. So soon we built an amphitheater, and instead of naming it the Hollywood Bowl, we named it the Mopala Bowl, and <laughs> where hundreds of people would come and visit. We held many events, such as a fashion show, where not only the kids from the village, from the orphanage, but all the women from the village could come and show off their beauty. We held events where singing and dancing groups from the village could come and perform, and it was so amazing to see all the talent that was right there in the village. We also used this opportunity to have many events showing AIDS awareness, tuberculosis testing, government programs, and to share our faith as well. It was so much fun and such a great way to bring the community together. After several months of being there, we had soon heard about the mobile medical clinic that would come once a month to provide basic care to the villagers. And they would line up at four in the morning hoping to get care. And maybe the bus would, the van with the two nurses would come around like 10 or 11. And they'd be there at four in the morning just with their sick families waiting in line. And by any means, oh, the clinic had no, uh, not enough medical supplies for everyone to be treated. And so my parents did something about this. And they called our church back here in the States. And we begged them to raise the funds necessary to build the clinic. And within a few months, they pulled through for us, and we were able to start building this clinic. Even the bricks of the clinic were made by the local people. And once it was up and running, it was equipped with an x-ray machine, a dentist office, and a pharmacy. And doctors would come from all over the world to volunteer their time there. 
And this really influenced me because my goal in life is to be a doctor. And so it would be a real dream of mine to go back to the small rural village in South Africa and give my time. After a year and a half, we saw that it was time for us to return home. So coming back to Thousand Oaks, we decided we wanted to change and influence our community. So we started a band called Rare Vision. Besides just playing at youth group every week or small church events, we even got to put on a benefit concert to help support the Japanese tsunami victims and sent all their money through Red Cross. We also were lucky enough to go to the Union Rescue Mission on Skid Row and stay the night there and feed the homeless. We also got to go down just to Camarillo and sleep in a box for the night and experience what it was actually like to be homeless for a night while sending money to the homeless shelters in the area. But we were lucky enough to do all this, but we just want to encourage everyone here that you guys can do this too. If it's local, if you want to go to another country, whatever you want to do, because the people you go to change will end up impacting and changing your lives forever. Now we're going to sing you a song, since we are musical, and it's called Keep Your Eyes Open. And I really want you to listen to the words, because they go, if you never leave home, if you never let go, you'll never make it to the great unknown, so keep your eyes open. Take the darkness to the grave. I know pain is just a place. The will has been broken. Don't let the fear become the hate. Don't take the sadness to the grave. I know the pain is on the way. The clouds have been chosen. 